Here is the universe. <laughs> and on it, we can see some galaxies. Now, this universe is expanding. Let's make the expansion turn on. Here it goes. As it expands, the galaxies are moving apart from each other. And the further apart they are, the faster they're moving. It doesn't matter which one you're on, they're all moving relative to each other. Now let's stop the film a minute and just think. If the universe is expanding as we watch it now, imagine playing the film backwards going into the past. In the past, it must have been smaller than it is now. The film in reverse will be contracting. The galaxies must have been much nearer in the past than they are now. Eventually, all of the matter in the universe that we see today would have been crammed together very tightly on top of each other. In fact, it's that moment of expansion out from this original compact universe that we today call the Big Bang. Thank you. <laughs> So, what have we learnt already? The universe is expanding, and from the measurement of the red shifts by Hubble, we know how fast it's expanding. Knowing how fast it's expanding, we can play it back. We know how long it has been since it was all crammed in on itself. So we've discovered the age of the universe. And the age turns out to be around 15,000 million years. So from those measurements, we've established one part of our story, the age that has been sitting on the top of these pictures here all the time. We know it by measurement, by Hubble's work. An amazing discovery. Because all cultures have been interested in this question of how did things begin, where did it all come from? We're no different. But we have put a number on it by measurement, 15,000 million years. Now, that's one half of what we've done. The second thing that we've done we've been able to measure the temperature of the Big Bang. We know how hot it was at the start. Now, how on earth do we do that, if that's the right way to say it? You can't go back to the Big Bang and put a thermometer in it and see how hot. Well, let me show how we do that. That all begins with the story from these two gentlemen. Now, this isn't a, a police mug shop. This is actually a picture of two famous astronomers <laughs> named Penzias and Wilson. They were working in New Jersey, in America, about 40 years ago, and they had this rather odd-shaped telescope. It's called a microwave telescope. They were looking out in the sky, looking for objects that radiate at us in the microwave part of the spectrum. And they had a problem. It didn't matter which way they looked, there always seemed to be this sort of hiss in their telescope. They couldn't get rid of it. What on earth was causing it? Well, they looked inside the telescope, couldn't find anything wrong, no obvious signals of noise in the laboratory causing it. They even thought that pigeon droppings might be causing it. They cleaned the telescope, still the hiss, whichever way they looked. Eventually they realized what it was. This was coming at them from the universe. They had detected the radiation, heat from the Big Bang today. What's more, they measured its temperature. But let's go along with this and see where it leads us. We can turn the signal from their telescope into sound, electronically, so we'll be able to hear the Big Bang. Now, so that you're sort of ready for cueing what it's going to sound like, what I'm going to do first of all is to play you a tape, not of the Big Bang, but of an earthquake. So you'll hear the sound of an earthquake having been processed electronically. You'll hear the thing go boom, 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 boom as it hits the, the surface of the Earth and bounces back. And after that, when you've got used to that, we will then hear the sound of the radiation from the Big Bang. So let's hear the earthquake. So that's an earthquake. Now let's hear the remnants of the heat from the Big Bang heard by Penzias and Wilson. Just uniform. Whichever way you look, it's just the same everywhere. In fact, very precise measurements, even in this last year, have shown 
that the deviation from that uniform hiss is at about one part in 10,000 at most. And that is the sound of the Big Bang still echoing around the universe 15,000 million years later. You can even pick it up on your own television. At night, after all of the decent programs have turned off, you're left with noise on the TV. You just can't get rid of it. Now, most of that noise is just electronic noise from your electrical circuits in the house or things going on around the town and so forth. It's always there. Now, imagine that you could clean it up and get rid of all that earth-based noise. You would still be left with a little bit, about that much of the lot. Now, that's not sky TV, but it is television from the sky. About that amount of your noise on the television set is coming from that background hiss from the Big Bang. So, you can hear the Big Bang, and you can even pick it up indirectly through your television set. Now, to pick it up really clearly, you have to have a modified television set, and that is indeed what Penzias and Wilson were using, a microwave aerial, specially tuned to listen to that part of the spectrum. And that's how they picked the whole thing up. And the most important thing of all for us is that they were able to measure its temperature, just three degrees above zero. And that's the second key we need, because I'm now going to show you what that means. Let's think what we've got. We know the universe is expanding, so in the past it was much smaller, much more compact. Let's see what happens when things that are compressed, like the early universe, suddenly expand out. Watch this. So Bryson down here has prepared for me a model of the universe, very compact under the table, and I'm now going to release the pressure and see what happens. Snow. It gets cold. Let's do that again. Wow. I knew Bryson could make the Big Bang, but I didn't know so successfully. <laughs> So what you've seen there is a demonstration. When you've got things that are really tightly compressed and the compression is released and they expand out, they get cold. Now think about that for the whole universe. Originally highly compressed and shooting out and getting cold. And Penzias and Wilson have told us how cold it is now. Three degrees above zero. So we know the temperature now. We know how old it is. We know how fast it's been expanding back to the Big Bang, we can work it all out and get the temperature at each and every stage throughout history. Who's going to help me complete the picture behind us and put the numbers on? Would you like to come down? You've obviously prepared, you've got your gloves on. Right. <laughs> your name is? Olivia. Olivia. Right, let's come around the back here and we'll uh, put some numbers on. We're going to need some spray paint. That's why you've got gloves. They didn't provide me with gloves. The budget must have run out, so I keep out of your way. Right, let's come over this side here, first of all. So here we are, 15,000 million years after the Big Bang, and Penzias and Wilson have told us the temperature is this. So would you like to spray the numbers on? OK. Very careful. Three degrees. Very clear. <laughs> OK, let's move back to another important signpost in the universe, 300,000 years afterwards, and we'll spray the temperature on there. OK? OK? 3,000 degrees. That's about half of the temperature of the visible surface of the sun. Just cool enough now that atoms can hold together. Let's go back right to the beginning, to the very hot part, just after the first particles of matter were being created, let's spray this on. Down the bottom. OK, that's it. Million, billion degrees. The temperature just after the Big Bang. Thanks very much. <laughs>